personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to come get my impressions on um, the guy that you know everyone says is the mole in Ryan Garcia's camp, and I can't even pronounce his first name, so I'm, I'm gonna have to work on it. But uh, his last name is uh, Erdenbat from Mongolia. You know they call him Genghis Khan. Uh, like 5-0, and oh, signed to Lou DiBella. Uh, he made a lot of noise in the headlines last week because he had that infamous video where he said, you know, he injured Ryan Garcia to the ribs in, in training camp. And then he, you know, he he said, are you okay? And then a lot, a lot of people, myself included, may have taken it the wrong way because he may have not meant anything by it. But, you know, due to him probably having a language barrier, maybe it just came out a certain way. Who knows? So... What I'll do is I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and I'll just look at the man as a fighter. I won't, I won't look at him as, you know, Erdin Bet, Genghis Khan, the, the guy that was the mole in Ryan's camp. I'll look at him for what I saw because I he had a fight, uh, you know, before, you know, he, and credit to him, credit to him because they got, a, they got a phrase and that phrase in life is that there's no such thing as bad publicity. So, yes, it was negative. He got some backlash, but ultimately... It let a lot of people know who he was. I didn't know, already know who he was. And it actually kind of put me on game because I didn't even realize that uh, DAZN had a card on Thursday, had a show on Thursday, and it was a Lou DiBella show. And uh, it was a Broadway boxing show and that he was on it. So because of him, he's the only reason why I took the time to even ch check out the show. He was the co-main event. Uh, the main event was Brian Ceballo versus Luis uh, Alberto uh, Verone who's like a 147, 154, like gatekeeper kind of guy. He used to fight like Michael McKinson and guys like that. But uh, Erdin Bat fought the co-main event. He fought a, a fighter who was 20, 26, 29 and 6, named Eddie Valencia. A good, durable fighter. And uh, my first impressions of Erdin Bat are, you know, first of all, I know I've seen highlights of him and I've seen sparring footage of him. So I know that, you know, he's an aggressive, hard-punching southpaw, likes to come forward. He's like, he, he's like many of these, uh, these fighters from those countries like, you know, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. You know, I'm like, got the fighters like um, Orebek Komatov or Mirja Akhmadaliev or, or um, my, uh, Vadim Musaya from Russia. You know, he's like, he, he's a southpaw, strong, eastern bloc type of fighter. Um, even though I think Mongolia might be in Central Asia. Some of me if I'm wrong, I'm not, I'm not a geography expert, but uh, he kind of has a style that kind of reminds me of those fighters I mentioned. And in this fight, from what I could see, he was trying to implement new things, you know, boxing and moving around the ring, uh, using the ring. And he showed, he showed that he actually has some boxing skills because uh, he was moving very well around the ring, throwing nice combinations, you know, uh, two, three punch combinations, different angles, um, you know, fainting here and there. You know, he he's got a, a, some IQ to him. He's got some nuance to him. He's not just one of these um, fighters that's gonna be over reliant on power. No, this guy this guy's got power. Don't get it twisted. He has he has the get out of jail free card. He has the uh, the thump in both hands to really you know inflict damage on his opponents. But Erdenbat, uh, I think he's a, I, I think he can really fight, man. I, th I think he can really fight. And um, he won an eight-round UD, which I think was good for him at this stage because, you know, he's, he's, he's still developing. But, man, good fighter. I, I kind of like him. I kind of like him. So, he listen, if his, job, if his whole intention of that whole Ryan Garcia thing was to talk a bunch of trash and get someone to watch his fight on a Thursday night um, on the zone, then mission accomplished. He did it with me. Uh, I like what I saw. Um, I know that, you know, he said that he wants to eventually fight Tank and Ryan in the future. Obviously, that's not, like, going to be something that's going to happen right away for him because uh, he's still, like, what, like, five or six fights into his career. But he's got a lot of amateur experience. You know, he fought Shakur Stevenson in the 2016 Olympics and lost to him. Um, he's a guy that uh, is promoted by Lou DiBella. And Lou DiBella said in his interview, he said in the post-fight interview, he literally said, that uh, this guy's gonna be an eight rounder and we're gonna build him properly, which means that they're not gonna rush him into any fights. 
They're not gonna uh, if a, if somebody dangles a carrot for a fight, he's not ready for, and they give him an offer that for a fight that that Ludabella feels he isn't ready for, and Ludabella knows a thing or two about boxing. He's been around the sport for a minute. If somebody comes with an offer for him, because that does happen in boxing, guys uh, who are green do get offers. I got friends in the fight game, and they'll tell me about they'll tell me about fight offers they get that maybe you guys don't know about. But um, you know. I'm I'm very intrigued. I'm I'm very intrigued to see what kind of fighter he winds up becoming because he can definitely fight. He definitely can box. Although the boxing still I think needs to be a little bit better to to to, to you know really be a factor on the top level. But still, you can see he's got tools to actually be a real legit player um, in the lightweight division moving forward. So uh, yeah, shout out to him, Genghis Khan, Erdem Bat, Mongolia stand up. You know we'll see we'll see what happens with him. But uh. These are my present presents on him as a fighter. You know, um, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because at, at the end of the day, I don't know what's in the man's heart. But I did think it, it came off that way. But who knows? Maybe it was a language barrier. We'll get him. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll start to follow his career a little bit here on True School Sports, and we'll see. We'll see if he becomes a real contender or if he was just a clout chaser that tried to exploit the moment against Ryan Garcia. We'll, we'll, time will tell all. But uh, those are my impressions of him. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding, Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.